have the IDP, the Integrated Development Plans. We have the DDM, the District Development Modules. But I cannot put those plans to use. It's not that black and white. We are not happy with you. When you're in your high level meeting with the government, you are supposed to represent us. Welcome to Climate Champions at Work. Sibambene, we are united. A five part podcast series sharing information, insights, and inspiration from the project fostering inclusive growth through climate change champions. Implemented by Democracy Works Foundation, the project aims to support collaborative partnerships between community based organizations, civil society organizations, local governments, and independent power producers. In line with a just transition framework, the aim of our work is to use opportunities presented by international mitigation efforts for social and economic development and local adaptation initiatives. In the Northern and Western Cape provinces, people are already severely affected by climate change, though it is often not framed as such. Floods, wildfires, droughts, and heat waves are some of the impacts communities are struggling with, on top of persistent development challenges. Since 2021, Democracy Works Foundation has worked closely with local communities and key stakeholders to learn from and build capacity around integrating climate change challenges into the local government and private sector planning and decision making. This podcast series is dedicated to the loving memory of Chrissy Williams a tireless advocate for community welfare and a devoted climate change champion. Sadly, Chrissy passed away shortly after recording her interview. Sibamben means we are united. This is a story about community-based climate change champions in the Northern and Western Cape. In today's episode, we look at how civil society organizations and the community can strengthen its engagement with local government structures to raise awareness about their needs and develop active partnerships. Bearing in mind that South Africa's local government sector is already in crisis mode, working together is essential for climate change champions and is a key opportunity for municipalities. Climate change affects all the services that local government has to provide. Local municipalities are also directly responsible to plan for and implement local adaptation strategies in partnership with communities. They also have to integrate climate change mitigation and adaptation into the existing planning processes. Lindo Gulche Vellum from the Public Service Accountability Monitor outlines some of the key legislations which inform how municipalities are run. She explains that a good understanding of this legislation will enable effective participation in municipal planning and oversight by CSOs and communities. You have your white paper uh, that introduces the con concept of uh, a developmental local government. Developmental in that your ideas matter, mine matter, and they brought into this one part to see us through. We want to be developmental in nature within our municipalities the Municipal Systems Act, how does the system work? Or how should the system work? It's all there in black and white. But it is failing because we are not holding the agent accountable. It's there. So when they get disclaimers, it's against the law. How are we holding them accountable for not doing what is right to the, for the people and for not opening up the spaces for us to participate? Um, the Municipal Financial Management Act, it's there. How are they meant to be providing services? If the municipal manager has to take a decision, is it the right decision to take? Can they justify that decision? Are we holding them accountable for that decision that has been taken? And then there are guidelines to public participation and the Batupili principles. 
And then there's the Promotion of Access to Information Act. Let us use it. It's not, it's, it's not a difficult, um, yes, you will need, there are networks in the space. There are people that are able to use it more efficiently to get the information. There are linkages with uh, social justice lawyers that you can go through. Lindo Gulche outlines the municipal structures and processes through which climate change champions are entitled to participate in municipal planning and resource allocation processes. She reminds the climate change champions that they have a right to ask for these platforms to be held and to use them to raise their request for climate change related planning and engagement. Since local governments and IPPs both have to engage with communities, it makes sense for all of these players to be in the same room, which in itself is already an advocacy opportunity for climate change champions. You have ward committees, you have IDP representative forums, you have the Section 79 committees that we can get to. But that is how a municipality encourages they publicize on newspaper that on such and such a day, there will be a public meeting. We are filling the indigenous policy. Come. Because that's also linked to how municipalities access funding. If they have a register of indigent, they are likely more, more able to access funding for projects within the municipality. Are we going to those meetings as people within that space? And what are those outcomes that we are finding? And where then can we channel our energies so that our needs are taken into account? So it's pretty limited what the local municipalities can do. They are restricted within their jurisdiction. So anybody in there, your yeah, social development, rural development, your independent power producers, they fall within the jurisdiction of the municipality. And so when it comes to planning, they should be there in the room. Our municipalities or our council should be holding everybody in the space that is economically benefiting from the space accountable for what they are doing within the space. If they are depleting the land resources, how are you mitigating with that? What is the, the spin-off? What are the people getting? Lindo Gulche emphasizes that bringing community voices around the climate change impacts they are experiencing is critical in local government public participation processes. She further explains how communities and their representatives can assert all their needs, including those experienced through changes in the climate, through actively raising their voices in the various platforms available to them. If you download the draft IDP of the municipality, and just look for climate change. Are they speaking about climate change in the, in the document? If not, make a submission. This is where we are. You're not a scientist. You do not need to be tabling what the heat is and the rainfall and what what. But it is a general crisis that we are under. Are they speaking about it in the strategic five-year document of the municipality. If they are not planning for 2031 today, we are going to be experiencing it. That's formulation. Approval is coming up. When they say, I vote, I vote, I vote, hold your elected representative accountable for the mandate. Are they using what you have given them in the ward committee meetings or in the ward, in the ward meetings that are chaired by the councillor? That's a needs assessment space. Your community-based plans, that's your needs assessment. We cannot rely on Stats SA who do not know our lived challenges. And that is what most of the planning, if they do not outsource it, they just go on stats to say and say that this is the number of people living in this municipality. Climate change champions had a lot to say about previous experiences of attempting to engage with existing public participation processes and pointed to the need for capacity building and practical solutions. The opportunity for climate change related mitigation funding to support long term development and adaptation through strengthening the skills required for active civic participation is a golden thread that ran throughout the project. I wanted to ask uh, you about 
like the most practical way of if maybe you're looking through certain documents and you see that um, you want to participate in some way, you want to hold uh, a council or council accountable, like what is the most practical way of doing that? Um, is there some sort of process? Uh, how do you continue to hold them accountable? Um, do you just attend in person? How do you follow up? Uh, what are the best uh, ways to find that out? Um, a simple steps to follow attend meetings download have gain access to all the documents go through the document if you can it's an intimidating document hope a soft copy is best so that you can quick uh, do a control f um, situation find firstly your community um, or your interest um, if it's in climate change or you are in Ward 2 within Block C, we found here in the city of Joburg, um, there's a community in, in Fine Town. Their profile was not even on or even in the, ID, the draft IDP. So the submission that they are going to make is actually we didn't find ourselves in this document. It can be as simple as that. So the ask can be we are people, we are not able to access our socioeconomic rights on this land because we see that we are not even featuring in your plans. How, what is the strategy or plan for us to access this land? Just download all the documents as they come out, look at the budget, how is it uh, split? Is your ask operational or a capital expenditure? If it's a capital expenditure, it may not be um, considered within this financial year. But if it is an operational uh, uh, expenditure, like getting Georgia tanks, we, are, we, we don't have uh, water, we need a catchment system, that can be an operational expenditure, which can easily be adjusted within the budget. And they say, actually, Community X, um, who has been on Facebook, part of advocacy is using the media, using social network pro uh, uh, platforms, tagging the municipalities. But how exactly do you do a submission? What counts as a formal submission? If you tag the municipality on social media, is that a formal submission? If you download the draft IDP and you see, okay, my issue is not here, how, what, you know, do you send an email? Do you have to attend one of the meetings? Um, after accessing your information, bigger municipalities like the city of Joburg, they will have a link that says click here to make your submission. But other formal spaces are the community meetings. Um, in September, they give out a plan of what are we got, the, the community visits when they do the IDP roadshows, that in such and such a date will be in community ward one to three, but the best is to go there prepared. Because uh, one of the in incidences is that they were giving two minutes to two speakers per ward. And, and you can't get most of the issues that people are dealing with. But if that is what you are met with, I think most of the time, our communities, we are wanting to deal with bureaucrats on, a, on an emotional level, which sometimes does not work in our favor. But if you say that this is the issue and this is how I want my socioeconomic economic right met, this is how I, I suggest that it, it be done. So if you're getting to the, 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 the point, be as crisp and concise as possible. Because two minutes for a whole ward is not enough when we have a list of problems that we are dealing with. And also keep up, keep up with what you said in the previous review. If it is then not in this, rev in, in this year's review, ask, Ask your counselor, why is this issue that we had brought up as this community? Attend community meetings. Because um, community-based planning, it is, it's a planned legislated space. And people are not using it. And therefore, are not able to hold municipalities accountable for that legislated space. For civil society organizations to fully understand the processes, platforms, and requirements available in local government is both a challenge and an opportunity. 
But as the track record of our climate change champions confirms, they do not easily shy away from this challenge. In fact, they embrace it. And here we are learning these processes. It's up to us now to go back and really study those documents, really understand, and then go back to our population and our communities and actually inform them and educate them about what should happen because these politicians have captured the country and we can no longer allow this thing to continue because we are in worse than crisis mode right now as we are in this country. I mean, look at load shading right now. You know what I'm saying? Whether you are an individual, organization, government or business, everyone is affected by climate change. Everyone has a role to play. Everyone has a contribution to make. In episode five, we look at the methods and techniques that climate change champions employ to create awareness and action in the community. This podcast is brought to you by the Democracy Works Foundation with co-funding from the European Union. Until next time, stay cool. This podcast is brought to you by the Democracy Works Foundation with co-funding from the European Union. Its contents are the sole responsibility of Democracy Works Foundation and do not necessarily reflect the views of the European Union. For more information about climate change and how CSOs and local government officials can benefit from the just transition process, please visit www.democracyworksfoundation.org forward slash FIGCCC.